Transcribed. Ladies and gentlemen, the railroad hour. And here comes the star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the great musical success, The Pink Lady, starring Gordon McRae and his lovely guest star, Lucille Norman. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and the music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight another memorable hit is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Our guest star is a young lady who's as beautiful as her own voice, Lucille Norman. You've heard her on the Railroad Hour many times in the company of other famous guests. But tonight, for the first time, she plays a title role. The Pink Lady. Paris is the scene tonight. Paris of the bright boulevards, the can-can, and beautiful women. One in particular a provocative person in pink named Claudine. I'll be Lucien Gadadel, a Frenchman with the softest job in the world, inheriting money. And so we're off for a little restaurant in the forest of Compagne, at the outskirts of Paris. Hello, vite! Claudine! 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 I'm looking for someone, sir. Yes, waiter. I'm meeting a woman. Beautiful woman. Ah, but monsieur, to a Frenchman, all women are beautiful, except his wife. <laughs> well, that's a fine thing to say to a man who's about to get married. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I haven't seen your future wife. Well, of course you haven't. She's not the girl I'm meeting. Uh, oh? Now we'll want to eat here in the garden. Just the two of us, in the most romantic spot you have. Uh, monsieur... You are planning a romantic rendezvous, but not with your fiancé? Well, of course not. How dull. You don't seem to get the idea at all. I'm going to be married in June. It's now the beginning of May. And so I'm still free to commune with a life that is single and gay. It's almost a sin Already I ought to be true I ought to sit down and begin To behave as he date husbands do But not just yet Just yet, just yet I've got about six weeks more Then I must forget, forget, forget All the joys I have known before Claudine must become a mere dream of the past And I the conventional hobby at last Just yet, just yet, I'm single for six weeks more. But not just yet, just yet, just yet, he's got about six weeks more. Six weeks to forget, forget, forget with a life that we all adore. Of course, at the end. I'm sure to reform and grow perfectly good, but not just yet, just yet. Monsieur, 
sees a young lady coming down the path right now. Ah, a vision in pink. Claudine! Oh, Lucian, I'm sorry to be late. Oh, you're sweet. But young ladies should never be on time, especially beautiful young ladies in pink. <laughs> Lucian. Now you take the girl I'm about to marry. She's always on time. You never told me you were engaged. Oh, no, well, that was a long time ago. Uh, oh? Uh, sh she went away. Died? Well, no, practically. She went to, uh, uh, Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan? In Canada. A river. How sweet. Well, now, really, Claudine, when a man's fiancé runs off to Saskatchewan, you can't expect him to go on acting as if he were still engaged. <laughs> By the banks of the Seine with girls so beautiful, it gives one pain to remain quite beautiful. And yet I swore by the stars above throughout my life to reserve my love for the girl by the Saskatchewan, for the girl by the Saskatchewan. On the banks of the Seine, there's love awaiting you to quell the pain that's exasperating you. Skip with joy as you laugh, ha, ha, and why roll quick, flip the cool, ta, ta, to the girl on the Saskatchewan, to the girl on the Saskatchewan. Another young lady coming down the path looking for you. Oh, my fiance. Back from Saskatchewan? Uh, you've got to hide. She's very jealous. Well, so am I. Well, you can be jealous in back of the tree. Oh. Quick, hide! Oh. Lucian. Ah, Jelle, my darling. What a glorious surprise. I thought I might surprise you having a secret rendezvous with another woman. Oh, Jelle. I've been sitting here lonesome, longing for you. And how does it happen the table is set for two? I was hungry. <laughs> A likely story. Where is the little huzzy you've been dining with? Behind this tree, I suppose. Oh, no, no. Ah, uh, Mademoiselle uh, Saskatchewan. Oh, did you hear what she called me? Please, please, ladies, listen to me. I know how this must look to you, but I assure you, Angèle, my sweet, your future husband is not dining with an unmarried woman. Who, me? Uh, allow me to present this lady in pink, Madame Don Didier. Huh? The wife of my dearest friend. You never told me you had a friend named Don Didier. Well, I, I don't like to talk about him uh, because of his illness. Illness? Uh, my husband is ill? The tragedy of your life. It is? I mean, it is. <laughs> see, he's, he's a wild man, goes around kissing women that he's never even seen before. Mm, I don't believe a word you're saying. Where does this Don Didier live? Huh? Uh, 72 Rue de la Paix. I'm going straight to that address and check up on your story. Oh, I wouldn't do that. And why not? Uh, my husband's not at home. Oh, he's gone to see a doctor about his lumbago. Lumbago? He has the lumbago? Uh, we think that's what causes his trouble. 
You mean he goes around kissing every girl he meets because he has the lumbago? <laughs> Isn't it curious? <laughs> Lucy and I am going back to Paris, to your friend's house. And if you aren't telling me the truth, oh, I feel sorry for you. Good day. I didn't like the way she said that. Lucian, you're a dreadful liar. I always thought I was rather good at it. Well, what will happen when she gets to 72 Rue de la Paix and finds there's no one there named Don Didier? <laughs> but there is. I remember the sign. Don Didier, antique. Do you know the man? Mm -mm. Never saw him in my life. Well, what do we do? Well, we must get to this fellow, Don DJ, before my fiancé gets to him and make him play along with us. Will he do it? If we buy enough antiques, he will. Come on, Claudine. We've got to beat Angel back to Paris. Philippe! What is it, pumpkin? What are you doing? Dusting the snuff boxes, pumpkin. Well, come up here and put on your best skirt. Madame la Comtesse will be here any moment. She is the richest woman in Paris. And if you impress her properly, she will buy out the whole shop. Just a moment, pumpkins. I see somebody coming in. Can I help you? Uh, are you Monsieur Don Didier? Uh, yes. Has a woman been in here asking about your lumbago? <laughs> of course not. I don't have lumbago. Well, you've got it now. I do? Now, listen to me. I am Lucien Garadel, your best friend. Yes? And I am Claudine, your wife. But uh, my wife is upstairs. Well, you, you've got two of them now. You've been to the doctor this morning. You're a wild man. Faithless. You kiss every girl you meet. You are both out of your minds. Now, get out of my shop. Oh, no, no, wait, 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 Mr. Dondi J. How much is this snuff box? A thousand francs. I'll give you two thousand. If you'll do as I say. Oh, well, uh, 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 what must I do? When a woman walks in that door, kiss her. But I, uh, I don't know how. <laughs> you don't know how to kiss? You're married, aren't you? What's that got to do with it? <laughs> don't you kiss your wife? What a revolting idea. <laughs> Claudine will demonstrate how to kiss. Observe, monsieur. One arm about the girl's shoulder. Another about the waist. The head, thus. The lips, hmm. I have kisses in plenty, but it would be.
accept these findings and has called a strike to start on Wednesday morning. It is the position of the railroads that such a strike, if it goes into effect, would result from an arbitrary insistence upon an absolute waste of manpower, such a waste as two presidential boards have disapproved, and such a waste as neither the railroads nor the nation can afford to condone. Now, here is Act Two of The Pink Lady, starring Gordon McRae and his lovely guest star, Lucille Norman, with the well known picture actor Michael Chekhov as the antique dealer. suppose this happened. Oh, well, we couldn't very well stay and watch the show. Hardly. If my fiancé found us both in the antique shop, she'd know it was a put-up job. If you don't mind my saying so, I think your fiancé is a prune. I agree with you. Then why did you propose to her? Well, it seemed like a good idea at the time. But you don't love her. Love? Uh, I hate love. <gasps> How can you say such a thing? Why, I love love. One more What's happening in that antique shop? Don't you wish we could hide in a snuff box and listen? Now, let me see. I've got a pink dress. I'm married to the lumbago, and uh, I've got to kiss a doctor. Oh, no, no, that's not right. Oh, this must be the woman coming now. All right, Don Didi, get ready to be naughty. <clears throat> Are you Monsieur Don Didier? I am. A uh, beautiful lady, did you ever have the lumbago? <laughs> I beg your pardon. Uh, you think your uh, future husband lied about me? What? It's all true. And I'm going to kiss you. Oh. I'm going to make violent love to oh. you. And I'm oh. going to... Oh, yes, oh, yes. I am oh. going to make violent love to you. Uh, yes, Pumpkin. What did you do to the Countess? That was the Countess. Who else? <laughs> oh, I have insulted the richest woman in Paris. Oh. I'll never do anybody a favor again. I'm looking for Monsieur Dundidier. I don't have the lumbago. I haven't been to the doctor. And to Shane Garridale is no friend of mine. You know him. He wasn't lying after all. Now kiss me, and I'll know that everything he said was true. 
kiss her and I'll bounce a snuff box off your head. <laughs> I'll kiss her if I please. What? Aha, uh -huh, my old friend Don DJ. Up to your old tricks again, I see. Well, oh, you time. kissing my you. fiance. You should be ashamed of yourself. Lucien, I'm sorry that I doubted you. And please forgive me, Madame Don Didier. She is not Madame Don Didier. Oh. I am Madame Don Didier. Oh. If she says she's my wife, I'm going to kiss her. No, 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 just a minute, Don DJ. I'm going to kiss everybody. But why? Because I like it. <laughs> you like it? I like it. <laughs> so do I. At half past two this afternoon, he was a moral man. Drink, 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 drink in the joy, part of the wonderful man. Half past three, a bold buffoon started a deadly plan To wreck his life on the rocks of sin To break the door of a scruples in And push him over the brink bang, bang, The brink where the glasses cling bang, bang. And the worst of it is he likes it He likes it, he likes it His head goes round like a teetotum His heart goes thump like a big bass thump Bip, bip, with a zip, bip, bip, with a zip Come and make things hum And the worst of it is he likes it He likes it, he loves it The worst of it is he likes it He likes it Yes, he does. And the worst of it is he likes it. He likes it. He likes it. A cyclone came and it whirled him round. He lost his feet and he left the ground. Dip, dip, with a dip, 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 with a dip. He likes it, likes it, likes it, likes it. And the worst of it is, yes, he Shell, sweetheart, will you believe me now? I love you and you only. The pink lady doesn't mean a thing to me. Oh, thank you, Lucian. Huh? I love you, too. Well, I was talking to Angel. I know. But I also know that you're the worst liar in the world. So, if you say you love her, you must be madly in love with me. Well, then I'll tell the truth, pink lady. For the first time in my life, you're as smart as you are beautiful. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Lucille Norman will be back in just a moment. And our thanks to Michael Chekhov. 
who played the antique dealer. And to the supporting cast, Eleanor Audley, Betty Lou Gerson, and Gigi Pearson. The Pink Lady with book and lyrics by C.M.S. McClellan and music by Ivan Carriel was dramatized for the radio uh, by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by the American Railroads. Remember that whenever you ship by rail, your money is working in four different ways. It pays for safe, dependable transportation. It helps ensure better and more economical service in the years ahead. It promotes business for industry and jobs for people in all parts of the country. And it means taxes that help pay for the education of your children and the general public welfare. Yes, for the country and for you, it's good business to do business with the railroads. And now here again is Lucille Norman. Wasn't it fun doing the Pink Lady together, Gordon? I liked it. You liked it? I liked it. I liked it, too. <laughs> well, that's good, because you'd better get used to seeing me across the microphone from you, Lucy. Yes, we're going to be seeing a lot of each other this summer. And you'll be back half with Dorothy Kirsten and me. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to be riding the rails together all summer. <laughs> I've got my bags all packed with stickers that say Summer Show Train. Mm hmm And we're inviting the whole country to travel back through the past with us, starting three weeks from tonight. What's next week, Gordon? Well, Dorothy Kirsten and I will be galloping through Sherwood Forest and the music of the all-time favorite, Robin Hood. Oh.